Are you ready, sir? Right. Uh, it's my presentation about what makes an effective coach in a sporting situation. Uh, learning objectives I'm going to cover demonstrate knowledge, determination of an effective coach. Learn outcome one. Pre uh, learn outcome two. Present and evaluate and interpret the principles of behaviour in a current coaching practice. Uh, learn outcome three. Evaluate the needs of young people in, a po in participating in sport. Uh, learn outcome. Uh, I will cover learning outcome four after my presentation, undertaking and evaluating a coaching se session contrasting sports performers. Uh, I'm gonna, the subjects I'll be covering for coaching, democratic coaching, autocratic coaching, coaching philosophy, uh, communication in coaching, leadership styles, and how they can be implemented in coaching, motivation from coach and player, uh, managing athletes, uh, managing young people in sport, and I'm gonna conclude my presentation. Uh, before I go on to my, uh, my slide about coaching, I'm going to say why I like to be uh, involved in sport for and why I've been influenced to do sport. Uh, I enjoy participating in sport, I enjoy coaching sport, and from a young age I've been led and brought up with, through sport. Uh, what is coaching? Uh, coaching, in my eyes, is when a trainer or player or team begin to develop through skill, uh, drills, skills, and uh, uh, working towards like objectives to uh, achieve a goal, team, or uh, individually, uh, whether they are big, small, or personal goals, which mean nothing to anybody else. This will uh, this all starts by improving and working on the fundamentals from a very young age, or if a player is new to a sport, and working them up to their highest level, um, whether they drop out or push to become an athlete, uh, elite athlete. Uh, for example, uh, at the minute I uh, coach for a company called Rugreds, we do uh, four to nine year olds, basic fundamental rugby skills, throwing, catching, passing, and uh, I believe this is a good sign of coaching because this is giving the children fundamentals to build and improve. So whether they don't like uh, rugby or not, it will uh, improve them like throwing, catching, running. Democrats of coaching and autocratic coaching. I'm we'll sorry, Democrats. Coaching. This is uh, a type of leadership where all the individuals have an input. Uh, this is so. There will be a team with a manager, but all the players involved will have a say and have their own input towards the manager's like influence on the team and different goals. A manager, uh, a player could help set goals for a team which is implemented by the manager. But then there's autocratic coaching. This is complete opposite. But there's one main coach who or one main person in the team who doesn't wouldn't really listen to anybody else's opinion but uh, take it upon themselves <coughs> to implement an idea uh, out from the team, so setting a goal, which everyone may not agree with, but this is a coach's thought to set this goal. Uh, there's, there's positive notes about both. Democratic, there's positive because everyone's involved and uh, everyone gets a say in what everyone's aiming for, but there's a negative as there may never be a um, Con like conclusion to it because everyone's always got a different view. Nobody's ever exactly right with each other. And then autocratic, it's the flip side. So the positive, there's, def there's a definite uh, target, there's a definite finish to what people are saying. But and then obviously there's one person taking control, and uh, nobody else really gets to say. Philosophy of coaching. This is. Um, this is when a coach puts their own experience, knowledge, and understanding into a certain, uh, a certain sport that they want to coach. So, for example, uh, Doc Rivers, uh, he was a famous, amazing basketballer in his time, and now he's gone into coaching. He's put his experience of playing into the players he coaches to push them and improve their own game through his own experience. The, the, 
the outcome could be good or bad because he was an individual who played a different position to everyone else. Uh, not well, different players in his team. So he may be putting his, implementing his thoughts, philosophy through his own game from what he played. But there may be players that don't are the same build, are the same skill, which need different coaching. So his philosophy does work as an experience side, but for like players specific, it may have a downfall. Uh, communication and coaching. This is what I feel is a, a key for a coach to have because nothing really gets done without communication. Uh, every coach needs to talk, every coach needs to be communicating with their team to be able to get their own philosophy, their own uh, ideas across. And uh, Ian Holloway, for example, he's a loud manager, he uh, shouts at his team, but his team respects him because of his communication. Um, they uh, they listen to him because in the in the in a dressing room situation, if a manager stands back, doesn't communicate with his team, the team will not won't know what to do, won't know what to go out and do, because their manager not taking a uh, a higher role over the players, he's just fading away and letting the players do what they want. Uh, for example, this is something that I think I need to improve when I'm coaching because. I feel I'm not vocal enough and uh, I feel hard to round up a group with my own voice. So I feel it's annoying. Leadership styles. This is vital for uh, coaches to implement when they're managing. Uh, the lead, this is where players we have to look up as a role model to the coach when he's coaching them and uh, they will be able to uh, role, so a leadership, I feel a leader is a role model from a coach point of view as a, just lost it. This, this rolls in like motivation, communication, philosophy, everything's into a leader and this is what a player aspires to be like as if your coach isn't a leader and, and shows good leadership style. They were. You wouldn't. You won't feel you want to improve. You won't feel like you want to aspire to be like your coach in that sport. Uh, because you you don't feel them as a role model. You don't feel them as a good leader. Uh, this is also something I feel I need to improve in my own coaching. Because I uh, feel like I try to be on the same level as the people I, uh, I teach, and I should take more of a leadership role more uh, like, as a leader towards them so they can see what they need to be like, see what they need to act like in a, a coaching session to, get them to be able to improve and get to a high level. Motivation. Now this, I feel as well, is a key point for a coach as uh, motivation can uh, make a player go from nothing to high, high things in life because without motivation, no player will have the motivation to, the no dr uh, drive to improve and uh, get better at a certain spot. If a coach had just stood back, not even praising him on good things, but uh, always finding the negative. So a coach needs good motivation to be able to for, uh, push a player to his, a player's absolute elite, to keep pushing them, even at a young age. If there's no motivation, even if the player's not exceeding expectation, doing amazing, as long as there's motivation, the player will always keep trying, always keep, always keep trying, always keep pushing to be their very best in the sporting situation. A good example is, of this is uh, Southampton, Southampton's new manager. They, um, they uh, lost a lot of players in the transfer window, so. Uh, he could only work with the basic players he had when he came into the team. And through his motivation, through, through his drive as a manager, he can motivate them to get their best, what they may not have got two seasons ago, one season ago. He was able to get their best by motivating them and uh, pushing them to do their best, to uh, get the best out of that. And now look at them uh, up top of the table. Managing athletes. This is key for a sport, uh, coach, because 
They need to know when to manage young people, uh, starters to, starters to uh, new sport, uh, people who've been playing the sport for a lot of years, uh, and then as you get on, older people, uh, and people who are almost retiring, but they, they still need coaching. So, if, uh, they, for a good example, I want to bring an example in quick, because there's a, the uh, Udinese manager, he's 36 and he's got a player who's 37 in uh, De Natale, and this manager still has the respect, still has the like, authority over this 37 year old player, whereas age, it shows age is not a, diff uh, not a matter, but the coach has that one step because he's the coach, he's shown, he's got the, he's got the authority over the players, the player is grouped as a player in the team, and he can't influence the coach even with age. And he's still the coach, even though he's younger, he's still getting the best out of the older, uh, the older player, being able to coach him. And he's still the player, 37 years old. He's playing football, top league, Italian, and he's still drive. He's still making new records every single game, and he's still playing now. And he's still. And the manager is convinced him to sign another contract for another three years. That takes him to 40, and the coach is younger than him. And also, in my experience, I coach uh, people 49 year old, and you have to take another look at coaching when you're teaching people under 10. So you need to realise they, they might not be able to run, they might not be able to catch, they might not have the coordination you have as a coach. So you need to break everything down into individual steps. So catching, we start with uh, just hands out, basic catching. Uh, even just stood there for 10 minutes catching. This is how you build up the uh, fundamentals for younger people, uh, for young athletes, and it changes as age goes on. Young people in sport, I've touched a lot with managing athletes, uh, with me doing the four nine year olds and then the. Well, when you teach young people, it's always key to bring the fundamentals straight in, work on the fundamentals for, for a long time. This is when you start to develop an understanding whether they can make it in the sport or they need more training. And there is, in teaching a sport to young people is a lot more one-to-one -one work as uh, they may not be capable of running without tripping over. They might not be able to throw without needing your guidance every time they do it. And with young people, it's always, this brings back motivation. It's always important to keep motivated Keep put, uh, like praising them on uh, when they've done something right, when they've done something like what needs improving. But never to say that they've uh, done it wrong. As uh, you should be able to ask them the question, what have, what has happened there? For example, if somebody dropped the ball, you ask them why you've dropped the ball, so they have an input back to you. So they feel they're learning, and then when they do this uh, drill it drill again, they'll feel, oh, I did that wrong, I need to improve it. Not that the coach has had a go at you for doing something wrong. Uh, concluding effective coach. Uh, no coach has ever been perfect. No coach will ever be perfect. They've all, uh, they've all got different blends of different aspects I've gone over. So one coach might be highly motivated, but find it hard to uh, teach young children. Well, and then people may be good with older athletes who may feel it's hard to motivate young, uh, younger or more challenging uh, players. Uh, uh, but all good coaches know which time it is, know what uh, situation they are to use the different aspect of the coaching. And all coaches should set out goals and, ex uh, and like, push players to exceed that goal. Even if it's a tiny goal of just being able to catch with young athletes, or being able to uh, break scoring records with the old athletes. Any questions? Aaron? Yes. Do you have a philosophy? Uh, well, I've only been coaching four years, but I have experienced what I feel I could put into my coaching, but I don't think I've built up a philosophy as such yet. But I still feel there's a, I'm starting to build one every time I coach. 
I'm starting to build up. Excellent. And can you tell me anything about physical literacy? Uh, physical literacy is made up with the psychological uh, effects of, uh, of participation, physical participation, and uh, mental participation, but it's, uh, what was it? it's not called mental participation, but it's, it's well, keep going. the work of the mind and how you feel when you're participating in your head. That's how you What's the benefits of, of sport to young people that don't necessarily just stay within sport? What kind of uh, things do they learn? Social aspects. Uh, I, if they're a new, they're single, like, uh, if parents put them in a team and they've never even met these players before, they can make friends, it'll, it'll improve their social background. As they've got a new group of friends at a sporting like, club. Uh, also, hey. becoming fitter. For example, if a parent puts them into a team and they've never done sport before, but they're there to improve the fitness, they may, they may find like they're one of the like, better players than team, but they've never done it because they've never done fitness before, they've never run before, they've never caught before, and it's all to do with building up the fundamentals. Excellent. Gents, do you have any questions? No.